Designs and monuments are an important part of any era. It tells us a lot of stories and gives us a glimpse of how people might have been during that time. So today we're going to venture into these very vital and magnificent parts of human lives and talk about some mega projects of modern architecture. Numerous beautiful buildings, both new and ancient, created by prominent architects, both past and present, are included on the list. The projects, which range from a treehouse in Sweden to an impressive art institution in South Africa, are connected by the superior architectural quality and merit examination by both architects and the general public. Let's take a look at some iconic mega-projects of modern art. The following house, Florida. Japanese architecture, which is renowned for its use of cantilevers, served as an inspiration for the landmark house design. The house was built as the Kaufman family's weekend hideaway and was well integrated into the surrounding natural surroundings. After completion, which Mr. Kaufman referred to as the Seven Buckets building, because of the leaking roof, the house's condition immediately began to deteriorate. Additionally, the absence of enough support caused the cantilever terraces to begin to crumble. The home underwent several renovations before being turned into a museum in 2002. Glass House To call that home his, Philip Johnson constructed it. He used the reflective and transparent properties of glass in his simple design. The home became a local landmark and was recognized as a figure in the field of modern architecture as a result of his experiments with proportions and geometric shapes. The major components of the weekend house were steel and glass, but like the falling water home, it also had a leaky roof problem, leading Johnson to jestingly refer to it as the four-bucket house. According to Alice T. Friedman, the Ludwig Mies van der Rohe Farnsworth House in Plano, Illinois, which was finished in 1951, two years after the Glass House, has been universally considered as having been drawn from the Glass House. In 1947, Johnson organized an Mies van der Rohe exhibition at the Museum of Modern Art that included a model of the Glass Farnsworth House. Johnson's project was significant and had a significant impact on contemporary architecture. The construction, geometry, proportions and the use of transparency and reflection in the building are all minimal. On the estate are more structures Johnson created during the course of his career. In 1997, it received the designation of National Historic Landmark. Villa Savoy, France In Poissy, a suburb of Paris, the mansion was constructed as a family getaway from the Savoyers. In its distinctive design, the Le Corbusier, five points, an open floor plan, a grid of reinforced concrete columns, horizontal windows, a roof garden and an independent facade were clearly expressed. The issues that started to appear after it began taking it caused the family significant suffering. A few years later, the family left it due to poor construction and architectural choices. It has somehow been converted into a museum and added to the list of public buildings. Le Corbusier had already gained recognition on a global scale by the end of the 1920s. His work with the Centre Soyuz in Moscow connected him to the Russian Avant Guard, and his issues with the League of Nations competition was extensively reported. His book, Vers Yun Architecture, has also been translated into a number of languages. He was a pioneer of modern architecture and one of the initial members of the Congress International de Architecture Moderne CIAM. The house is an illustration of the early usage of industrial elements like glass and steel in residential architecture. Johnson spent 58 years of his life at the Gateway Retreat, five of those years spent there with his longtime partner David Whitney, an art critic and a curator who helped create the retreat, landscape and gather the majority of the artwork on show. The Guggenheim Museum, Frank Lloyd Wright, New York, USA, 1959. The renowned architect popularized the idea of organic architecture, which proposed that people would be closely connected to the surroundings. Many important galleries and art collections may be found inside the cone-shaped museum. You're taken on an unending trip that eliminates all barriers between rooms by the spirally planned interior. Wright's description of the rigid geometric forms that characterized modern architecture is as follows. These geometric forms suggest certain human ideas, moods, sentiments as examples. The circle suggests infinity, the triangle suggests structural unity, the spiral suggests organic progress and the square suggests integrity. The Guggenheim was a temple of the spirit in Wright's eyes. Since the 1890s, Solomon R. Guggenheim, who came from a wealthy mining family, had been collecting old master paintings. He met the artist Hilla von Rebe in 1926, and she exposed him to European avant-grade art, especially abstract work that she thought had spiritual and utopian quality. In addition to other artists, Wassily Kandinsky's work caught Guggenheim's attention, entirely altering his approach to collecting. At his suite in New York City Plaza Hotel, 
he started to show visitors his collection. In 1937, when his collection expanded and he saw the need to promote modern art appreciation, he founded the Solomon R. Guggenheim Foundation. Barcelona Pavilion, Ludwig Mies van der Rohe, Barcelona, Spain, 1929 Initially known as a German pavilion for the 1929 Barcelona International Exposition, which housed the German section of the show, the pavilion was first built. The structure has translucent walls and a cantilevered roof, both of which reflect the Bauhaus movement's influence. Despite the pavilion's sparse design, the architect made an effort to incorporate opulent materials such as red onyx, marble and travertine. A renowned Barcelona chair was one of the opulent pieces of furniture designed especially for the structure. After successfully overseeing the 1927 Werkbund exhibition in Stuttgart, Mears and Reich were granted the project for this building in 1928. Not just the Barcelona Pavilion, but also the structures for all the German sections of the 1929 International Exhibition were given to Mies by the German Republic for artistic supervision and construction. Mies, however, was working under extremely tight deadlines and in an unsteady economic environment. He had less than a year to build the Barcelona Pavilion. Germany began to reform in the years that followed World War I. After the 1924 day was planned, the economy started to improve. A self-portrait in architecture, the pavilion for the international exhibition was meant to symbolize the new Weimar Germany, democratic, culturally progressive, prosperous and utterly pacifist. It should give an expression to the spirit of new era, according to Commissioner George von Schnitzler. The free plan and the floating roof were implemented to carry out this nation. David S. Ingold's skating rink in the New Haven, Ibro Sarinen, Connecticut, USA. The structure is often referred to as Yale Whale in honor of the Yale University, from whence Ibro Sarinen graduated. Sarinen, who frequently employed catenary arches, left his personal architectural stamp on the imaginative design. The roof of the hockey rink is cantilevered outward and is supported by a 90-meter-high reinforced concrete arch. The rink has a cutting-edge structural system that makes use of a 90-meter reinforced concrete arch or a catenary arch, as it is known in Sarinane's work. A cable net supporting a wooden roof is strung from the arch. As a result, a stable two-fold curvature shape results. During the development of the structural design, outside wires were added, connecting the arch directly to the roof's outer margins. These cables deal with the forces brought on by an asymmetric wind loads. For the project, Fred N. Severed served as the structural engineer. As part of the demonstrations of New Haven Green against the Black Panther trials, many rock bands performed a performance on May 1, 1970 in Ingold's Ring. Two explosives detonated in the basement of the North End to the rink shortly before midnight and were approaching the conclusion of the event. The explosions did not result in any casualties, although they did break the building's glass doors and create fractures in its arch. Although no one was ever found to be responsible, both Yale President Kingman Brewster and New Haven Police Chief James Ahern asserted that either Panther supporters or opponents may have hidden the explosives. Eero Sarinen and Associates, immediate offshoot Kevin Roach and Roach Dinkaloo refurbished the structure. An additional concrete refrigerant slab costed $1.5 million was constructed in 1991. In 2007, it was announced that the rink would receive a $23.5 million renovation. This renovation would include new men's and women's varsity locker rooms, training and strength and conditioning rooms, and additional press box, a lower-level hockey heritage area, offices for coaches of both programs, a student-athlete study area, new lights as well as a so-called soap box. Villa Durix, Marcel Le Bon, Brussels, Belgium, 1933. Villa Dirix is yet another important structure of modern architecture. It's surrounded by vegetation and has eye-catching blocky elements, glassworks and white concrete. Luxurious furnishings and amenities like a wine cellar and a theatre can be found in the property, which is valued at $10 million. Belgian architect Marcel Le Bourne was a trailblazer and is regarded as the originator of modern architecture in his country. For Mr. Dirix, an industrial tycoon with a passion for the arts, the mansion was created. The property was abandoned for a long time until being purchased in 2007 by developer Alexander Cambron. Cambron invested every available resource in renovating the property. Isocon Building in London, Weld Coates, London, UK, 1934. The residential structure, which is still in use today, has 32 units, 24 of which are studio flats and 8 of which have one bedroom. Additionally, the structure has a large garage and staff quarters. Because the inhabitants had access to a shared kitchen, the units featured small kitchens. They were allowed to make food with it. 
There were more services as well, like laundry and shoe shine. In 2003, the structure underwent renovation by Avanti Architects, a firm that specializes in modernizing residential buildings. A community gallery was created in the garage as a result of the renovations to educate the people about the history of the structure. New National Gallery Ludwig Mies van der Rohe, Berlin, Germany, 1968 the museum houses a collection of works from the first decades of the 20th century and is dedicated to contemporary art. It has a cantilevered roof, a lot of glass and flat exteriors, a hallmarks of modernist architecture. Mies van der Rohe also designed the sculptured landscape that surrounds the structure. A portion of the Berlin State Museum's National Gallery houses the museum. Since 2015, there has been a gallery closure due to renovations. Kevin Roche and Roche Dinkaloo, a company that is an immediate offshoot of Eero Saarinen and Associates, refurbished the building. At a cost of $1.5 million, a new concrete refrigerant slab was built in 1991. There are two separate stories in the new National Gallery's floor layout. With a total of 2,683 square meters, the upper floor doubles as both an entry hall and a main special show gallery. It is only reachable by three flights of steps and is raised from street level. The exhibition pavilion is the main architectural statement of the structure, albeit making it a very tiny percentage of the entire gallery area. A square, pre-stressed painted black roof plate is supported by eight cruciform columns, two on each length and positioned to avoid corners. Between the glass facade of the gallery and its eight supporting columns, there is a generous 18-meter cantilever. The area is organized on a 3.6 meter square dimensional grid and has a floor to ceiling height of 8.4 meters. Lighting fixtures are housed in black anodized metal egg crates that fit inside the grid while air ducts are hanging above. Although it also has a library, offices, a store and a cafe, the lower stories, 10,000 square meters of area is mostly used to house the gallery's permanent collection. To ensure that the artwork can be stored safely, it is located three-fourths below the ground. Ample indirect internal illumination is provided by its lone glass facade, which overlooks the museum's slope structure garden. The museum's display area is further expanded by a rooftop patio. The Cité Radius, La Corbusier, Marseille, France, 1952. One of Le Corbusier's most significant creations, this housing development served as an inspiration for several subsequent modernist architectural endeavors. The yellow, red and blue color scheme of the Bauhaus had an effect on the minimalist project. It consists of 337 units of 27 various types, a playground and a swimming pool. The structure is composed of rough cast concrete and the architect intended to add a steel frame as well. Unfortunately, World War II made it difficult to get that sort of material. Since 2016, the building has been listed as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Cité Radius, Radiant City, is a high-density residential construction that is a part of Le Corbusier's Unité de Habitation concept design. Cité Radius, a brutalist structure in Marseille, France, is regarded as one of Le Corbusier's most well-known and accomplished creations. It is also the most influential brutalist structure of all time. In fact, it's frequently said that this structure served as the primary source of inspiration for the brutalist architectural movement. The structure, constructed between 1947 and 1952, was a community-wide application of Le Corbusier's renowned maxim that a home was a machine for living in. By designing a self-contained 18-story block with an ocean liner-like construction, it reinvented high-density housing in the process. Le Corbusier decided to create the structure out of beaten brot, rough-cast concrete, which was textured by its timber formwork, departing from his signature pure white surfaces. This was done out of practicality, since a steel structure would have been too expensive given the post-World War II material shortages, but it later became a brutalist architectural standard. The long elevations of the building have a sequence of balconies and deep-set windows that provide a powerful visual grid. The structure is lifted off the ground on substantial concrete peloti. In order to construct designs and human proportions, Le Corbusier developed the modular man method of measuring on which he built his grid. Every third story of the building has a corridor that runs down the middle of the long axis. They are referred to as internal streets. Around the central access corridor, pairs of units are interconnected. There are 1600 apartments in the structure, along with stores, athletic and medical facilities, a hotel and a restaurant. Along with sculptural air stacks, a jogging track and a kiddie pool, Le Corbusier planned for the flat top of the building to function as a community patio. 
When the building was presented, the architectural community hailed it as a success right away. At the inauguration ceremony, architect Walter Gropius reportedly declared, any architect who does not think this building lovely had best put down his pencil. The idea has repeatedly failed elsewhere while having an enormous impact on the system-built residential buildings. Some have theorized that this is because the generous proportions of Cite Radius were not followed. Thanks for staying until the end of this video, share your thoughts or comments in the box below and see you next time.